What's going on, smart people? I spend a lot of time nowadays talking about graduate physics and what that whole thing is like. I'd like to take it back and go back to the roots a little bit and spend today talking about freshman physics. Technically, I am a freshman grad student, but no, we're gonna be focusing on first year undergraduate physics today and really discuss what my overall experience was with it. With it was? Not an English student. I think that physics starts to show traces of how counterintuitive it can be much earlier than you might think. I think when people think of counterintuitive physics, they largely associate it with quantum mechanics and things like wave-particle duality, which is true. The concepts can be counterintuitive, but you don't spend the entire lectures fixated on the concepts. At a certain point, you have to get down to the math. And at that point is when I think quantum mechanics starts to become extremely intuitive. I mean, there's parts of quantum mechanics where the method of solving the problem is literally guessing the answer and then making corrections to your guess. But that requires a different type of intuition, a mathematical intuition, which is something that you have not developed yet freshman year of physics. Regular old intuition, whatever that is, in freshman physics will only help you solve problems if maybe one variable is changing. Like say I have two cylinders that I'm rolling down a ramp, they have equal length, diameter, but one has half the mass of the other. Maybe they're different materials or something. Which one will hit the ground first? You might say, well, I know that objects of different mass in free fall fall at the same rate, so maybe the mass doesn't affect it, so I'll say that they hit at the same time. Great, yes, that'll, that's true. That'll actually get you the right answer, but what if I introduce more variables? What if I say the one on the right is half the length of the one on the left, and the one on the left has half the radius of the one on the right? And this one also has half the mass of the one on the left. Now what happens? At this point, in freshman physics, you're probably guessing. If you wanna know the answer to this question, check out Walter Lewin's video, which I have linked in the description. It is fantastic. But the point of this is that in freshman physics, it's riddled with all of these conceptual questions where they change one thing. And at least for me, I was just trying to put myself in the position and feel it out based off of what I was more familiar with and see if I could kind of guess the answer, sort of. No, even with those multiple choice or just super conceptual questions, always go to the math because that will never lie to you. So I had a pretty tough time in freshman physics because when I was given a conceptual problem, I thought about it conceptually instead of doing the one line of math it would take to get the numbers that would get me the answer to the problem. And because of this, it made me less equipped to solve the more sophisticated problems because I didn't know how the equations were connected to even the simplest cases. And what's wild is I remember in freshman physics, we would have exams that actually had some multiple choice on there. I don't know if that was unique to my university or if other people who've had freshman physics also had multiple choice on their exams, but it would be a combination of the multiple choice and then short answer at the back. And I'd see the short answer questions and say, oh, I need to make sure I have time to solve those. So I would go through the multiple choice really quickly, not really going through the math. Big mistake, even if it's something as simple as two schematic diagrams, you have everything the same, except for in one circuit, you have light bulbs connected in series, and in the other circuit, you have light bulbs connected in parallel, in which configurations are the light bulbs the brightest, I'd be, well, maybe this, I don't know, I, I don't really have time, yes, you do, you have the time, take the two seconds it takes to find out how power is connected to, you know, things like current, and just go through the math. Moving on from that though, one thing I do remember about freshman physics is being the only physics major in a room full of like 80 engineering students. So being in freshman physics, you're not just surrounded by a bunch of physics majors, or at least that wasn't the case for me. But I remember having this feeling of, I need to make sure I know this stuff because I'm the physics major in the room. This is a physics class, even though it was like my first physics class. But our professor also knew that I was the only physics major, so he would call on me more to make sure I came prepared to lecture, which I kind of appreciated. It was a lot of pressure, but I guess it made me learn the material more. But since there are so many students in these freshman physics classes, because it's not just limited to physics majors, your professor's not gonna wanna grade over 100 homework assignments every single week, so universities largely use this online resource called Mastering Physics, so it's an online homework that you do. It's kind of a double-edged sword, because for your questions, it allows multiple attempts, but it'll also still take off points if you get one of those attempts wrong. So, you know, and, and there's so many questions, and I always had this suspicion that our professors didn't really look at what questions were being asked, because sometimes, yes, they were relevant to the material, sort of, but it was obviously something our professor would never think to ask us, which, which always frustrated me. 
I know I'm making freshman physics sound absolutely miserable, and I don't mean to be. It, it just, it did kind of suck for me though. I mean, um, Michio Kaku said that freshman physics is made to be unnecessarily difficult. That way it weeds out the weaker physics and engineering students, and I think it definitely did that job, but it does get better after freshman physics. Having said that, it wasn't all terrible. For example, I actually really enjoyed the labs that we did in freshman physics. It was finally, it was actually something I could hold on to and understand. And I learned more from labs than I did from my homeworks. It's the only class where I learned more from the labs. Having said all that, even though those two courses, those introductory physics courses are weed out courses, it's not meant to weed out everybody. There's so many exams and then at the end, at least in my experience, there was a curve. So there's tons of opportunity, there's homework, quizzes, and exams to correct your grade. And then at the end, they look at the distribution and assign grades on the distribution. So for there to be those opportunities, a curve at the end, and then to still fail, that's kind of, who that was meant to weed out, which is a very select few. I wanted to share my experience in freshman physics because I really think I had the power to make it a better one and maybe this can help someone else. Uh, that whole mathematical intuition thing that I was rambling on about, that comes with experience and that experience is developed by taking those conceptual problems much more seriously and treating them like every other physics problem, going through the math. I can't stress the importance of that enough and overall how much that would have helped me in my first year of physics. Sorry if I was a bit all over the place in this video. I'm trying to pre-record some videos because I'm going out of town tomorrow and I don't want to miss any of the daily videos. So I still hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments section if you did and I'll see you guys there.